So school ends the 5th of June, I want to say. For you guys, your last day is the 4th of June. So when, when, will, when will like the assignments be finished up? Uh, you have three weeks of assignments left. That's it. Like nothing. And there's like breaks in there too, like days off. So not even three weeks. You got this. This is our last full week of like school, school. All the other ones have days off. So you got this. Um, four days of assignments here. Boom. I even put them all just on this one document for you. So you just have to turn this one document in at the end of the week. Um, so yeah, organic chemistry. Uh, you're going to do a few things this week. I have some Ed Puzzle videos for you today. Um, I also assigned to you some Khan Academy videos in case you didn't understand things because they explain it sometimes in a different way. Maybe it works better for you. Um, so you should already be in my Khan Academy class. If you're not, you can ask me for the link again. Um, and then tomorrow, I have a Quizlet for you. So just play around with it for a while and then complete the uh, study features. Wednesday, you're gonna build some organic molecules. And then Thursday, either you can make a short video for me to explain the concepts, um, but you gotta use some kind of like visual. So maybe you screen record the uh, molecule builder or something, or you could like write them out in notes, make them look nice and then take a picture of that. So that's your week. What will it look like? Um, but let's do a little bit of review first so that you're ready to learn about organic molecules, mainly alkenes and alkenes. Sounds like weird words, um, but what organic molecules means and what these mean is they are hydrocarbons. So it is just what it sounds like. They're made up of hydrogens and carbons, hydrocarbons. Um, sometimes they have other things mixed in there, but not always. Um, and it's mainly hydrogen and carbon. Those are the like backbones, you could say. That's what makes up a lot of it. So uh, I'm going to show you the simulator that we're using in a minute here. But first, oh, I pulled up a lot of things, but I want to show you this. Okay, you may or may not remember this from eighth grade. And Varga wasn't with us in eighth grade, so I'm not sure. Um, when he talked about this, if they did, but you should remember when we talked about an atom and that it has protons and neutrons, electrons, and you should remember that there are valence electrons. So um, if you forgot, this is kind of what it would look like. The center is called the nucleus. So you have there the protons and the neutrons. So they are positive and neutral protons positive, neutrons are neutral. But right now, we're mainly concerned with the electrons. And those ones are not in the nucleus, they actually go around the outside. So imagine this green circle as your first orbital. So everything around here, these electrons um, are the first orbital. It can hold up to two electrons. The next orbital, the blue one, it can hold up to eight electrons. So if I look at this, um, and I could take any atom and do this, you would find the atomic number on the periodic table. So if it's nitrogen, I could find it on here. And its atomic number is seven. It's in the top left corner. So I know that it has seven protons and seven electrons. The protons are already in the nucleus, but these are my electrons. Um, I would first fill up the inner shell. Okay, it's full. Inner shell is happy. Um, now I'm going to start filling up the outer shell. So I would fill up one of each of these around the outside until all of my electrons are there. Boom. Okay. Um, now this outer shell um, is, it wants to be full. Okay. So that's called the octet rule. It wants to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It can hold eight, but it only has one. Let me move that. It only has one, two, three, four, five. 
So that's five of eight total that it could have. Now, because of that, it wants to get more. So it has five valence electrons. It's going to be reactive because it wants to fill this. It wants to fill this, and it wants to fill this. Um, and by doing that, um, it can't just take electrons from another one usually. Usually it has to share with another atom. Another atom that's missing one here, it could bond with that, and it could share one. It could share one with another atom here, and it could share one with another atom here. Um, let's do another example. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight. Up in that top left-hand corner, you can see that. So if I were to fill this up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now we have eight electrons, but we only have six valence electrons because that's how many are in the outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So because we have six out of the eight, we have two spaces that are left empty. So it wants to bond with two different things so it can actually share electrons with them and it can be complete. It doesn't want to have those empty spaces. If you do remember we talked about this in eighth grade, we talked about it as a hotel. Um, I don't remember whose hotel it was. Hmm, no, I don't know. But anyway, it was someone, someone's hotel. I feel like it was Dylan's hotel. Um, and any of these empty spots were like empty rooms and they really needed to get them filled. So those are valence electrons. Um, that's how they look. So here's just another look at an atom here. Um, again, the neutrons go on the inside along with your protons. every proton that I add, I'm going up one in the periodic table. So I'm trying to get all the way up to six so I can be carbon. Um, and I'm going to make my neutrons equal this time. They're not always equal, but um, we'll make them equal here. And then my electrons should also be six, like my protons. So I need to add six electrons. First two will go to the middle one. After that, they have to go to the next shell. So we have one, two, three, four. I need six, five, six. So now that I have six electrons, I can count the valence electrons, the outer shell. One, two, three, four. So if you remember, um, it wants to have eight, the octet rule. So I need to find something that will allow the carbon to have eight in the outside. So in order to have eight, it needs to get four more. It needs to bond with four things. So that is where we come to organic chemistry. Um, it is made up of hydrogens and carbons. So um, hydrogens can only bond to one thing. They only have one electron already. So they only want to get one more. They only need to fill up that small inner shell of two. So hydrogens will only bond with one thing, but carbon, in order to be happy, it needs to be bound to four things. So as you can see, it's got four hydrogens here. Um, so this is the most simple hydrocarbon you can get. This is organic chemistry, hydrocarbons. Um, but I could make this a little more complex. I could actually um, decide to make two carbons and I could make a bond between them just like that um, whoops but if I did that clean it up um, yeah it starts to do weird things it's not actually happy like that hydrogen can't bond to carbon can't bond to five so we need to fix some things up so I'm going to erase this hydrogen right there. Right now, if I look at it, is it happy like this? So I cleaned it up, so it added the extra hydrogens we need. This one has one, two, three, four bonds. This one has one, two, three, four bonds. So they're both happy. Uh, one bond is shared between 
the other are with hydrogen. So usually, if you're making a hydrocarbon, you start with your carbons. We call it sometimes the carbon backbone. And then you can add your hydrogens on that. So if I want to do a bunch of carbons, let's say I want to do three carbons now, um, I wouldn't add the hydrogen until last. I would do that first, adding the carbon. And then, okay, this one needs to have four bonds. So right now it's only got one. I can add three hydrogens. Now it's got four. This one has two bonds, so it needs two more. Now it has four. This one has one, two, three bonds. It needs four. So now it's complete. Clean it up a bit, and this is how it looks. So each time I'm just adding on um, more carbons and making sure that all of them are happy in their bonds. So it all comes back to the electrons. That's why we reviewed that a little bit. But you this week are going to be looking at all of these ones. And every time you add a carbon, it will change the properties slightly. Um, but they all uh, have something in common. They are hydrocarbons. Um, and a lot of times you find these in fuels and gases and things like that. The first one we looked at, this one right here, with just one carbon and four hydrogens, that is called methane. Um, and it's a gas. So they can usually be burned with combustion, so with oxygen, and they would split up into carbon dioxide and water, which makes sense, right? Um, so this is the hydrocarbon, and you guys are going to learn how to name all of these. So even if I were to, let's say, have uh, all of these carbons, you could tell me exactly what molecule this is, just like that. And you could tell me what it was, and you could draw it. You're going to be able to do that um, just based on how many carbons there are, right? And the hydrogens are simple. They're added on at the end, right, um, just to make sure that they all have those happy four bonds, all of the carbons. Um, and one other trick that you will see or maybe not trick, but one of the things you will see is that sometimes, rather than being bound to four things, they might actually have something called a double bond. So instead of just sharing one pair of electrons, they share two pairs of electrons. So now, those already each have two bonds. To make them happy, I could just add Two hydrogens to each. And now this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, and they're both happy. And there you go. Do you guys have any questions so far? No. Cool. Does it make sense? Makes sense. Hey, good. All right. Um, so I'll draw another molecule for you then. Because this makes sense. Um, this is not actually a hydrocarbon, but it's just to kind of show you how the bonds work. So, like, if I had oxygen, if I see oxygen, like just oxygen in the air, it's not just as O. Oxygen actually has six valence electrons which means it needs two more. So it needs to bond to two things. So if it's only bound to one oxygen, O2, like we call it, what kind of bond do you think that it had if it needs to be bound to two things? Uh, covalent. Uh, it is covalent, yes, because it shares electrons. Um, but they each need to be bound to two different molecules or to two molecules. So how could I change this that it's still O2, but each of them has two bonds? We need to add one electron. I need to add, what's that? Another. 
another thing? Yeah. Like another atom? Another, uh, another molecule. Um, okay, so this is a molecule, right? I could add another atom, like I could add a hydrogen to each. And now this one has two, this one has two. So remember oxygen wants to bond to two things. So this would be happy, right? But that wouldn't be O2. That wouldn't be like gas that we see in the air. So if I just have two oxygens, how can I make that happy like that is? It was a good guess to add the hydrogens, and that would work. It would just be a different molecule. Okay. Any ideas what I could do here? You remember this one? Double bond. So now, each line represents two electrons that are being shared. So this one already had six. So now it is sharing one. So it gets a seventh one. And it's sharing another one. So it gets an eighth one. And they want eight. So now it's happy. Same with this one. It already had six. It's sharing this one. So it gets a seventh. It's sharing this one. So it gets an eighth. And it's happy. Um, if you look back here, when we talked about nitrogen, it wants to share as well. Um, and like you said, it needs to share with other molecules. So it needs to share here, needs to share here, and it needs to share here. It needs three bonds, basically. So in order to do that, um, again, this is just N2. Nitrogen makes up a lot of our atmosphere, most of our atmosphere. Um, if I were to make that a double bond, would that yet be satisfied like that? Do they each have three bonds? No, they do not. Um, so I would want to take this and make it into a triple bond. All right. Um, so what you guys are going to see this week is that you could do single, double, or triple bonds with hydrocarbons. So a carbon with a carbon could be done in three ways. You could have only single bonds. could be double bonds or it could be triple bonds um, and based on the number of bonds will determine how many hydrogens we add but what's most important is that you can always count there are four bonds to carbon one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four, one, two, three, four. right so keep that in mind this week and um, are there any questions So we count how many lines? Yeah. For carbon, you would count how many lines and make sure that every C has four lines coming out of it. Make sure that it's happy and that's a stable molecule. Good question. Any other questions? Let you guys go off and try this on your own. Too confused? Are we okay?
um, this homework is just the the ad puzzle, right? Yep. So today you're just watching some videos. Hopefully it builds off of what I explained a little bit. Yep. Well, if you guys have no more questions, then I will let you go get to it. All right. Sweet. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.